Well. All right, we are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Final segment, if you have a question or comment for our guests about gardening, what you're doing, and it covers the whole range from vegetables to flowers to lawns. David Bates with us along with Melissa McKay. And uh, David, you know, so much of this, uh, we can go just about anywhere on it. I, I know some folks don't like to get as scientific as this, including myself, but it's often recommended that, you know, if you have an area you're going to be planting, get your soil tested. Do you have to do that? And even when I had mine tested one time, a long time ago, I wasn't even sure I fully understood what it was they told me after they tested it. But is that a good idea to know what you have and what your soil needs? If you have known issues or, or maybe you have issues and you don't know, a, a soil test is a good baseline thing to go with to give you an idea of what it is that you need to do in order to get your, uh, uh, your test, your soil optimized. Now, it may be that um, it may be that the, in most cases, your soil is pretty good. Yeah. Or at most, it just needs to have some amendments added to okay. it. And you know, then that goes back to what I was talking about with regards to soil preparation. If you if you put uh, add amendments to your soil that do two things, you know, add organic content and also uh, put particulate matter in there to create pore space. And those things might seem to be at odds with each other because one tends to hold moisture and the other promotes drainage. And the truth of it is plants need both of those things. So if you can, if you can put good living soil amendments into your soil, then your plants are generally going to be more capable of taking up the available nutrients that are there. Sometimes there are issues in the soil that uh, if your pH is way out, that will compromise the plant's ability to take up soil. But normally, most of our soils don't get outside of the range where that still is able to be taken up properly. Gotcha. All right. Let's, let's take a call from Linda. Linda, good morning. Hi, Linda. Uh, good morning. Um, I have a question, well, comment first. I had my soil tested uh, with the Ag okay. the, uh, Department, and uh, they found really nothing wrong with it, but I always have trouble with my tomato plants. I've heard that if you grind up very finely eggshells and kind of amend it in the hole when you plant it, that that gives them more calcium. Is that uh, a good way to go or just what? Okay. Good question. Eggshells. Yeah, well, that, you can use that. The problem with eggshells are that they are a what we would uh, refer to as an extremely slow release form of calcium. That is to say, if you put calcium on, even as fine as you can grind it up, uh, it'll be six months before that calcium is available in the soil for the plant to, to uptake. So you will have missed the gardening season. If you were going to use those for springtime gardens, you would need to do that in the fall prior in order to give it enough time to have a chance to break down. Or you can simply, you know, we, we tend to eat eggs on a regular basis, so you could just kind of keep them ground up and use them all along. But it, it's a very slow release form of calcium. So you may prefer, if you know you have an issue, to use something like a soluble calcium product uh, even dolomitic lime uh, will uh, lower the uh, the pH uh, but you don't get calcium through that the soluble calcium will give you that and also do some pH work as well as we stand here now then um, just moving forward just uh, with the folks that you're probably going to see today some of them may come in questioning about soil I found for me raised beds because you change and add new soil every day. What, what is your thought about raised beds and who are raised beds for in your opinion? A raised bed for either flowers or a vegetable garden? Well, raised beds are, are gaining with a lot of increased popularity uh, and I kind of put raised be, uh, bed gardening and container gardening in the same category. Uh, number one, you have gotten the soil above uh, the ground level. So that means it's going to have the ability to drain better. So if you have drainage issues in other parts of your yard, this helps to mitigate that. So it gives you the ability to for it to drain well. It also gives you the opportunity to be able to uh, put a, a blended soil mix 
in there that's been prepared for you that you don't have to do yourself. Now, you c could do it yourself. You could bring all the materials in. Most people who are doing container gardening or square foot slash raised bed gardening are going to go with a prepared mix, and it takes a lot of the work out of it. And also, as we age, as we had referenced by an earlier caller, you know, bending over becomes more difficult. So uh, a raised garden or a container garden gets those plants up off the ground a bit. It makes it a little easier to get down there and uh, take care of them. As far as the other plants, just we just have a couple minutes left. Any parting shots? There's so much I want to ask you, but just what you're telling folks now as we sit at this stage of the season, um, the priorities you would think for right now as we sit here coming to the end of March into April. Uh, the, the priorities from my perspective is, is number one, uh, do your soil preparation first. You need to be thinking about what, what are the needs for what you're going to be planting in the future. Uh, the old adage is if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I think it's very true in gardening. Uh, the biggest mistake I see people make in gardening is... Uh, and, you know, we, we love people to come out and shop, and that's great. But the people who really get the maximum benefit for their gardening dollars are the ones who have, have come up with some kind of a plan about what they're wanting to use and where they're wanting to use it. So uh, impulse shopping, you may see something that you like, but you need to have some ideas in mind about where you're going to use that. You don't want to just get home and say, well, where am I going to put this? Right. So people tend to miss uh, buy because they haven't put a plan together. So do that. And also, as we talked about earlier, keep in mind of, of it's still early in the season. If you're thinking about vegetable gardening, right now you should only be planting cool season vegetables. Yeah. You can get away with warm season if you're prepared to take care of them. That's awesome. Them yeah, the two that them. I've planted, I planted my little green onions and I planted peas. And you should be good on both of those. Yeah, you should be good on both. The, plan, the peas that... may be subject to the peas may be subject to a little cool season damage. You, but hopefully, we might sneak past it. I'm I hoping. Hope so. but you, I hope you so. got to be weather aware. Hey, David, thank you so much for coming on. Thank Melissa for us as well. And let's do this again. And uh, you stay busy out there. Hey, we're well, looking forward to it. You right. let us know. We'll be here. Hey, thank you for your time, sir. Much appreciated. Learned a lot. We'll take a break. When we come back, I'll have a programming note about tomorrow and a little more information on Bates Nursery. Stay with us.